So today we're making ring wraith boot armor. Now this is going to be really big, like what I would consider life size, something that's going to function as a boot cover, not as a normal sabaton, which would be put over like a, just a really thin leather boot. This needs to fit over a shoe, something comfortable to wear walking all day. So I've sketched out kind of how I want the parts to work. Most parts went through at least two iterations, some of them more, just to get everything to fit together properly. But I've added in the allowance now to account for the thickness of the material. I'm just temporarily holding everything together with these paper fasteners. It also can still move here. I debated what materials to use. I was originally thinking of just going with the classic EVA foam. In the end, I just wanted something that's going to be more durable. It's really going to hold up. So something that I can still work with easily enough to make the shapes that I want. So I tried Kydex. This stuff is pretty darn cool. Now this is the thinnest one. It's like 0.028 inches. That was going to be another problem with using EVA foam is if you use the thicker stuff, well, these layers of articulating plates, that's going to get really thick really fast versus if you use a thinner foam, then it's going to be more fragile. It ended up working so perfect. I've got my pieces cut out from the Kydex and I've marked the lines where there needs to be fluting because I could score this from the back and then just fold it but then it's weakened so instead I'm just heat molding it around this wire. I'm just going to press that down till it cools and if you don't get it right the first time you can reheat it no problem. I've gotten all of the pieces fluted here for this and then I've just taped them together so I can go ahead and just kind of check and see how things are looking with regards to fit. You'll just tighten the straps around however wide the shoe is. I also added a little bit of a curve here. For the first one, for the right shoe, I shaped it onto the model here. And then the second one, I've just made that a mirror. I've already done the right side for the back of heel piece, but I need to add in this little curve here. And that's so that this back piece is a lot less likely to kind of get caught on that edge. You have a smoother surface and a rougher surface. I'm using the smoother surface as the outside for this project. So just by going with the less textured side, I didn't need to do any kind of filling with that. This you can bend and bend and bend and bend. It's not going to just snap in half if something oopsie kind of happens. For these back and front pieces, I'm adding a little curved edge here, which is gonna mimic the folded down edge on the Van Brace piece. It's pretty simple. I have just left a little extra there, kind of like a seam allowance. So just an extra bit so I can fold that over. The other piece that I still need to do for the left boot is that front part here. I've already done one of them, just kind of experimenting to see what's gonna work. The basic shape is it needs to have the line here, it's like curve, heat up just the center, curve it out a little bit there, and then let that cool in that position. And if you don't like what you did, you can just heat it back up. It really is a lot of back and forth and just experimentation. Anywhere that you fold the material like this, especially once it's rolled up a little bit, it does give it a little more stability there. You just need some sort of tool to press that little bump there that goes at the ankle on each side. Just using a tablespoon here. Don't try to finish any one part before moving on to the next because as you work on one area, you know, some heat gets over here and kind of distorts that a little bit, so you really have to work on it as a whole. There's a certain amount of error that's introduced so for mine, I had to trim away a little material just to get these parts lining up properly with the space here to here. It's also a good time if the shape of the hole here isn't right, based on the shoe that it's going to fit, you can kind of heat the whole thing up and just squeeze a little bit and adjust it to fit. I could have just left this as just the thickness of the Kydex. It just didn't have the right feel. So I glued on foam to the back, just regular two millimeter craft foam using contact cement. Some areas were a little bit challenging to get the foam all in in one piece. So if it tears a little bit, just kind of, you know, touch it up with some glue, add in a little piece to fill in the gap and you're good to go. It's really not going to show. It doesn't have to be perfect, although I get it as perfect as I can because that's just how I roll. If this were made of Kydex, this seam here, if I melted it on or glued it on, would be a really bad weak point. So I just 3D printed it. To get the fluting in there, I just left a little bit of like a dish out of the back so that I could then fold it down, use the 3D pen to just melt a little filament in there, hold that in place while it cools, and then it will keep that shape. I did punch the holes, but I also sanded all of these edges. So it blends the foam and the Kydex together to turn this into something that's kind of more the right shape. I've already done one and found a shape that I like, so I've just made a pattern here with some tape, sketched it out, and now I can stick that onto this one and trim that to match. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a light sand just to help the paint stick better. Obviously there's a lot more to this project. I'll have it for you soon. Thanks for being here. See you soon.